Hello, welcome to The Talking Point. On today's show, we'll be discussing unemployment in Kenya, and I'll be your host, Ikra Abdi. Un the unemployment rate in the East African region keeps getting worse. Stats show that more than 80% of the young people in East Africa are without jobs. According to UNDP, Kenya leads other East African countries with the largest number of people who are unemployed. Records show that one in every five Kenyans is, is unemployed as compared to Tanzania, where one in every 20 Tanzanians is without a job. The unemployment rate in Kenya by the end of 2017 stood at 39.1%, with the majority of the unemployed being the youth. Academic institutions have largely been blamed for producing half-baked individuals who cannot fit in the current evolved job market. The greatest employer in Kenya is currently the informal sector, Juwakali, which employs more than 86% of the workforce and controlling close to 80% of the economy. The sector, however, faces numerous challenges, including inadequate funding, tough business environment, and inadequate training among those within it. The current population of Kenya is 51,973,600 649, with the table below showing the number of unemployed Kenyans in the year 2015 and 2016. Youth unemployment between 15 to 34 years is 11.4. Overall unemployment 15 to, six, to 64 years is 7.4%. Um, in urban areas, 8.0% being 15 to 34 years. 5.0% being the overall unemployment, and in rural areas, 3.5% being the 15 to 34 years, and 2.4% being the overall unemployment. The sex male is 4.0%, with um, um, female being 7.4% in 15 to 34 years. 2.6% male and 4.8% percent female being the overall unemployment from 15 to 64 years. With me here today, I have Brian and Ian. Brian being a fourth year uh, student at Kenya Methodist University and Ian being a lecturer. Could you guys please introduce yourselves? Yeah, so my name is Brian Gatia and I'm currently studying in Kenya Methodist University and I'm almost waiting for my graduation, which I'm really hoping so, good willing, and I'm thankful for inviting us. Ruby. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ian Obare. I'm a lecturer in Kenya Methodist University and I'm proud to be seated here besides my student having a conversation on the same and see how we can be able to uh, discuss the matter issues regarding to that is uh, unemployment in Kenya. Thank okay. you very much for having us. You're welcome. Okay. Brian, I'll start yeah. with you. Okay. What does the word unemployment mean to you? Unemployment. Yeah. So unemployment is basically uh, not having a chance get a job market, like for example in our country, in our Kenya. And as, as a youth, I'm actually a youth at the moment, which we actually having the highest percentage of unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. Because you come and see and uh, you find like uh, a student comes, studies a course, and then uh, graduates, and then afterwards like getting outside, you get now the real world perspective. Yeah. So you come and find like Jobs, it's really hard in our mm -hmm. country. But I think uh, to some point, like we're really trying our best, like doing innovations, uh, doing other uh, things, precisely. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um, our yeah. lecturer here, mm -hmm. Ian, yes, yes. Um, you have students. Yes. Yeah, and Brian is your student. Very yeah. true. So what does unemployment mean to you when your student comes to you and tells you they're not getting jobs? because he's a fourth year un uh, university student right now. Thank you very much for that question. Well, uh, unemployment uh, that is on my own perspective lies yeah. on uh, two sides of angle. One, uh, we have the intrinsic uh, way and the extrinsic way of which actually has led to unemployment to our students. And the intrinsic way actually uh, we're looking at to the student, him or herself. Mm -hmm. That is, um, if you look, let me say like, uh, ever since we were young, the only thing we knew is when somebody asks you, who do you want to be? 
you would say, I want to be a pilot, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a, a driver, I want to be a policeman. All these are just employment lines, okay? So uh, n very few people from the world go when they're young, they have that mindset that I want to be an entrepreneur, okay? So uh, you find out that uh, uh, even in the academic setting, for example, uh, we have been nurtured in, that, in such a way that we are just working towards employment, towards employment, okay? Mm -hmm. So that is one issue that we need to look into, the intrinsic, that's within us first, okay? Mm -hmm. So another one actually, besides the mindset actually, is how we do our things. For example, when you look into, um, when you look into uh, this, now our students, for example, one, they don't learn to master or uh, gain knowledge in school. That's not what they do. What they do is uh, they learn or they really work or they engineer to get good grades, okay? So uh, having uh, that combination of your mindset and then the combination of I just want to do this, uh, at the end of the day is once they finish the, the school, for example, yes, they'll have a first honor, class honors degree. Uh, and then another thing is their head will be looking towards what? Towards employment. Mm -hmm. Finally, intrinsic, uh, sorry, the extrinsic uh, issues or uh, the external issues or forces that actually leads to unemployment actually, as of right now we can look at is our Kenyan economy, okay? So the Kenyan economy actually, let me say like, um, uh, has the best foot first to get the best to the market. Okay, and not all of us are best. Not all of us, let me say, like uh, are number one to be into the market. Yeah. So I think uh, combining those two forces, that is, uh, what is happening within us and what is happening without us. For example, that is the external factors. They lead us to actually to a very very high rate of unemployment. Thank you. And um, you know, the schools, the universities mainly, yeah. they've been um, accused of giving out half baked graduates. Yeah. Oh. graduates that lack skills. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say about that, Mr. Ian? Thank you very much for that. Well, uh, there is a reality on the half-baked uh, uh, graduates. Mm -hmm. There's a reality on that. Reason being is uh, it is a two-way, but more so uh, uh, the, the ball always runs on the student. There is a saying that goes that uh, the lecturer or the teacher or the professor gives you 25% and then 75% is the yes. work of the student, okay, mm -hmm. to, to, get there, to gain knowledge or information. Now you realize that most of our students actually have a big challenge of they really don't have that time for themselves to do the, to go the extra mile of the 75 percent. They really don't have that, yeah. So what happens is they rely on the knowledge uh, or the information that are given by their, by their lecturer. And actually most of them actually they usually say that should be a full stop because this are, is the handle the lecturer gave me, for example, and uh, this is the lecturer, the topic that the lecturer told us to read on. They don't go an extra mile to get the information. So uh, having said that, you realize that, uh, that the element of the half-baked will come in because um, you only believed what you're told, you didn't, uh, didn't even go to do any research about it. So that is one challenge. Another challenge is, um, let me say, like, goes towards the lecturers. Definitely you might find some challenges when it comes to uh, uh, some lecturers coming late, for example, in class, some others not attending class. So combining those two forces actually realize that that brings a very high element of uh, half-baked uh, students or graduates. And going to the market, actually, you will know that they know nothing. The students, yeah, so the graduate, saying, yeah. students yes. are to be blamed for <laughs> the half baked graduates too. Uh, to some point, yeah. To some to point. Uh, the, the bigger <laughs> share, they take the bigger share. The home, bigger I would share. say that, yeah. yeah. But okay, yeah. me being okay, me being a student yeah. too. Yeah. The I don't think the lecturers give you. You've said lecturers mm. give you half. Yeah, they give you actually a quarter. To they give you a quarter. Percent, yes. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And to you, Brian. Okay. Um, how has been the job hunt? Wow, 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 wow. Uh, it's, it's really hard to some point. You mm. know, like, uh, I cannot say, like, you just go out, outside there and then you find everything on a silver platter. 
So being like a student right now, uh, to get a job it's really hard because I've actually gone to many, several interviews. Yeah. I've applied to other organizations and like you, you find like they need you to have this experience. Mm -hmm. So you as a student, you ask yourself like, how do I get this experience that they're asking for? So it's upon you now as, as a student to go now the extra mile. You get the skills, which the skills will actually bring for you the job market. So, yeah. Okay, another point. question yeah. for you, Brian. Sure. Um, when you were starting university, yeah. your first year, what were your expectations? Wow, my expectations. So like you're fresh now from the high school yeah, and then you come to the university. Yeah. So one, one, one thing that I think most of us as students, we usually agree is we have the freedom. Right? Yeah. Because now you find like you're in another different environment. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you're stepping in in the university, you don't know anyone at, at first. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I started, like I, I had friends of mine, they used to come and tell me, you know, you came here alone and you live here alone. That's, I think that's most, most of a common saying that people usually say, true. which is actually true. Because when you get now to the university, you'll form a family, right? Yeah. The friends who you started with, like right now I'm actually privileged to have Mr. Ian as yeah, my lecturer, lecturer and also as a personal friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, to some point, the expectation is not like similar to what you're expecting at the beginning. Yeah, because once you get towards the end, that's the time you come and realize like, wow, uh, did I cover four years? Yes, I did. But how was the journey? I it was up and down like I used to have really straight roads, I used to have wheels. There's a time I used to have like a uh, low, low time. And yeah, I think it's, it's really, really much appreciateful for you to be in for the at the moment. Because if we, we look now on the un un unemployment rate, yeah, right? Unemployment like for me, I'm actually privileged to be here and also to complete my school. And I would say there are people that are facing challenges. Right? Yes. So you, you find most most people they get into drugs. Uh, most people they they say I'm stopping like education at the moment. Let me focus now on business. Mm -hmm. But I cannot judge them because that's like how life is. But okay. if you're really wise, I think if you go to the education part of it, it will shape you like on the course, on the right course. Okay, Brian, let me yeah. rephrase my question. Yeah, yeah. What sure. were your expectations wow. when, it can, when it comes to the job market? <laughs> what, for, what for? My expectations. Yeah. So and I, what are your expectations? What, what were and what are your expectations when okay. it comes to the job market? To the job market. So wow. my expectations at the beginning, I thought like job market is just simple. So you just go to the university and then you get a course which you're passionate about, yes, right? Of course. And then you do it and then in the end like, you get now the job wow. you know, waiting for you. But in real sense, that, that never, okay, yes, it does happen to some point, but on a small percentage view, okay? And my expectations were like, I wanted to really do IT because IT is more broad. Right now, the world is currently shifting towards technology, and I yes. think all of us, we, we have that in mind, right? Sure. Yeah, and if you look like a course, you're doing uh, computer science, so it gives you a many, many platforms you can actually do in the medical department, you can do in the business department. In every department. In every, yeah. But now to get the job is now yes. the, quite the challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Mr. A, yes, yeah. please. you look young. So could you please take us through your journey <laughs> oh. of being a lecturer? Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I do agree with you. Uh, I'm young. How but old not are very you? young. Wow. Right now, I'm 31 years. 31? <laughs> yes. Pretty so, young for a, for a lecturer. So. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I have been teaching for like uh, from uh, when I was 24 years. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I started uh, teaching from 24 years. Well, according to me, I would say that um, when you look to the element of unemployment, I'm going to just uh, discuss my journey towards that employment. First of all, I never that had, I never had that mentality of um, of uh, of being what of um, of being employed. But um, things change course. Time dictate, uh, dictates what can be done and yeah. what you can achieve. Personally, I have a very big passion on lecturing because of my background. 
of my background because uh, mm -hmm. let me say like um, I was not that very very sharp student uh, back then uh, when I was young and I was growing up uh, if I can remember vividly um, uh, actually me and my brother let me say like uh, we are just close tight in terms of uh, I'm one year older than him being the first one and uh, my brother actually let me say like uh, when uh, when we started up going upstream learning in in class three or grade three you can call it grade three for now uh actually i had to repeat and uh, since he was behind me he came and found me in, in uh, third grade mm -hmm. and then as we went up up to class seven actually i repeated again and uh, actually let me say like he went ahead of me that's my younger brother mm -hmm. and then after that um I finished and I went to a national school in the country. Uh, it's called Lenana School. And uh, still, I did well in my KCPE, but when I got back to, the, that, that, um, uh, to Lenana School, actually, let me say, like, I still got those challenges. And um, I went on slowly and I finished and I got a C. Um, if you look at my journey, actually, from nursery up to Form 4, uh, let me say, like I used to, at least the highest I would go would be like top five. To, sorry, bottom five. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's the highest I would do. But I can remember in class six, actually, I did my best and uh, I went, actually I became number 136 out of 200 and, uh, 213. And actually, I was the most improved student. That is uh, back from in bottom pre five to bottom fifty. Yeah, yeah, I went up. I went up, um, and uh, and uh, I was given an award. Then it was a boarding school, so I was given an award of a half loaf. Okay, it was very important. So uh, after that, actually, uh, yes, I did work hard, but I did not achieve my best. So, um, but now, after finishing high school, I went to a certain college actually. Uh, that is, uh, it's called Digital Edge Institute, and there actually I learned software engineering. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, it was just as a by the way because they came to our high school and they talked about this, uh, uh, this whole software developing thing. And uh, finally, I found it interesting, but I had no clue. But I told my dad, "Can you go and check on this?" Mm -hmm. And my dad actually gave me the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, from then, actually, um, I started programming when I was. I think I started programming when I was around. 19 years and uh, I did it for like uh, three months and then now I joined since I got a C I went and joined the diploma mm -hmm. then that is in the university where currently that's Kenya Methodist University so uh, starting on diploma actually I realized that oh I'm good with computers since actually I had a small slight background on software engineering how to develop software and everything so uh, I did my diploma and actually I was the first student and I really performed very well. Mm -hmm. I did my degree, I did very, very well. Now, when I was exiting on my degree, actually, uh, I came up with a concept of which I, pre I presented to the vice chancellor mm -hmm. and he was very keen and interested on my, my project and um, he told me they're going to offer me employment. Uh, Vasa V, I'm going to do what to work on there to work on the project and I say that's okay so I, I worked on the project and I got an, I got employment employment the university and then after that uh, the moment I got my job like that I enrolled for my master's mm -hmm. and uh, I went up I went up and I went up actually um, I finished my master's in 2014 2014 actually November 28th to be precise and uh, still on I, um, so I'm very passionate in teaching because if I look at my background back then, I really wanted somebody to tell me something, you know, tell me something to understand okay. something, mm -hmm. but it was very challenging. So part of my, my, when I teach my classes, actually, I'm always very open. I think uh, uh, if you'd ask Brian or the rest of the students, actually, I'm one of the most approachable and most friendly, and I do listen a lot to students. So, uh, and, uh, better part of my, uh, let me say, my, my units or my course that I'm teaching, actually, uh, the students really, uh, let me say, perform exemplarily good. And uh, another thing that I incorporate in my, in my teachings is, is not only about come, learn, get an A. We always, uh, we always get some sessions where we discuss about uh, the real life issues. 
uh, the real life, uh, let me say, like uh, things that you're going to face ahead of you or that, that are going to come ahead of you, such type of things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and um, even when was it actually, uh, uh, used, the day before yesterday, actually, I was talking with somebody on LinkedIn and uh, he told me, thank you very much and you inspire me a lot and I'm doing great because of the things that we did in class. And those are some of the things which give me more, more hype to teach more, teach more, and bring people from the point of view where they don't believe in themselves to a point of view where they, they believe in themselves yeah. and they are looking uh, on their way forward. Yeah. yeah. Can I add something on that? Please, you can. Yeah, and to be honest, like, Mr. Ian, I think, is one of the best lecturers that we have in Kenya with this university. Because I remember there's a time I, I had an, an, an issue. So there was like, uh, we didn't advance database, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I never had the clue. Because like, I was trying like my best, like the 75% of mine, and the lecturer did the 25%. So I, I, I decided like, let me just do an extra mile and research on this unit. So I, I was actually uh, just in one of the classrooms and then I, I saw Mr. Ian was sitting behind. So I never knew at first that he was a lecturer because he hadn't taught me any unit previously. So when I went and I asked him like, hey, hi, Molimo, how are you? He was like, yeah, I'm good, thank you. So like from the politeness, I just knew like, we'll click together. So that time I asked him like, uh, Molimo, can you help me out? Like I'm having this issue with this. You knew this. he was a teacher? Right afterwards, oh, like how after you how, met him, yeah, oh. after like how we met him. So I just asked him, like, hey, Molimo, can you help me out? Like, I'm having these issues with the database and everything. So, he, Mr. Ian actually he did a quite amazing job because actually, like, if I would compare myself previously and how I am mm -hmm. right now with the database, I'm really good. And it's all because of him. So you, your lecturer played a big role. He did, then I'm congratulating <laughs> him. Like, yo. <laughs> Thank you. Much, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. it, you've said lack yeah. of skills. Yeah, lack it's of skills. It's like um, a major thing. Yeah. So how do you, how do you get skills for you, Brian, as Brian? Okay. Yeah. How do you um, learn skills on learn your skills. own? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So how do I learn skills? So I'm. Um, one thing, I'm not perfect at anything, but I usually use this saying, once you learn something, you get to, to get this knowledge, it drives you to become a better person mm -hmm. in, in the future, right? So I usually do personal research. Like at first when I was in my first year and second year, I wasn't doing really that much of research. But once I came to third year and fourth year, and then you come and realize like, wow, the job market really requires you to do to have actually, to have skills. So currently I'm actually working on my skills on how I can improve on doing things. Yeah. So basically skills in, in computer science, let me say it's more of, uh, practical. It's not even, okay, like books, it's, it's, impo it's important actually for you to like learn and everything. But when you get the skills for computer science, it's practicality, how can you fix this problem? Because like for me, my colleagues in school, they usually come to me and ask, yo, Brian, can you just come and help me out in doing this? So I usually challenge myself. I just go and learn which problem is actually being associated there. Mm -hmm. So basically, I just do an extra mile. To me, okay, to apart point. from Mr. Yeah. Ian here with your other lecturers, what yeah. kind of relationship do you guys share? Because, um, uh -huh. you know, a lecturer plays yeah. a big role yeah. in a student's life. Yeah, so true. how do the other lecturers Play, play a big role um, in your Do they even play a big role in your life? Yeah, they do. They do. Okay. Actually, they're my source of fire. <laughs> they're my source of fire. Because uh -huh. um, once, once I got inside to the university, I met friends. Mm -hmm. So friends like meeting you, uh, meeting Mr. Ian. Mm -hmm. But the lecturer actually has fire in me because the drive that he has, like for example, how Mr. Ian was saying, that his previous life has brought him to where he is right now at the moment. So if I take that example, like if I use now the experience from Mr. Ian, and then I try like to know where I am at the moment. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Ian actually can guide me as a mentor to become someone else better. Yeah. yeah. And also the skills that you get, mm -hmm. you as yourself, you can actually share it with others because sharing is actually caring. So. Okay, back to you, Mr. Ian. Please. Um, okay. You've seen um, people 
having like there's so many cases of mental health yes like with so many you don't even know if the person next to you is suffering from mental illness <laughs> very true so could you like explain mm -hmm. how is unemployment yeah, really. related to mental illness or is it related in the first place could it be the reason for the rising cases of mental illness okay it can be okay. well well that's a very broad question yeah. but i'll respond to <laughs> uh let me select with a section that actually let me select uh, i'll understand uh, you'll understand better okay. um let me select there's always that fear mm -hmm. of once you're through with the university or with your academics not getting a job yeah okay Using the statistics that you have seen there, uh, let me say like uh, we have at least a very high rate of employment in Kenya, and uh, let me say like uh, for the men actually stands at is it five five percent five percent, then for the women stands at seven percent if I'm not wrong. Okay, yeah. so uh, that's a very high statistics, and uh, there's always that um, uh, that tension. What if what happens? Okay, now. Uh, the thing that I would like to, should I say, like uh, uh, point out as we are doing this lecturing or teaching our students is prepare your students, first of all, academically. Yeah, academically, that's where they're going to get the knowledge and the skills. Okay. Secondly, uh, they need to know the reality. Quite a number of our students actually don't know the reality don't know the reality uh, in terms of what is facing them outside there. Yeah. Another thing is uh, on, the, um, on the point of uh, uh, the student themselves, uh, when, they are, when actually I like what Brian has said, in the first year and the second year, he was not doing a lot of research, but in the third year and fourth year, he started doing a lot of research. Um, there is a mechanism that uh, when we start any class that I have, I always teach them. Uh, you have, all of you guys actually, when you come here in the university, you have a potential of getting a first class honors. But the moment you get into the university, make friends, get friends, mingle and mingle and mingle, quite a number of students actually disappear in between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they come and, should I say, like uh, recover or they get shocked or they come up or they rise again when it's either third year or fourth year, okay. which actually, let me say, like uh, it becomes very, very difficult for them to go up. Now, they start fighting how to raise their GPA. Now, that is another mental issue that will come because when you start fighting on how to raise your GPA and a GPA is a very, very, uh, let me say, like... Um, uh, let me say hard system once you are down bringing it up you need to it's do some magic in your honor you need yeah. to do work extra hard okay so that is one thing so when they when they look at the GPA and then they look into their the job market that they're going outside there now anxiety starts building up mm -hmm. anxiety starts and then uh, besides on that now uh, they start getting uh, let me use the word emotional what if with this low grade that I have uh, how do I go up to get this grade so that I can be able to do what? Be relevant in the job market, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, um, if uh, a student joins a university, I would say this again and repeat, you start working from the word go, go okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a technique that I used when I was, oh, when I was doing my diploma. Um, I go to school, actually, the only friends that I had was my roommates, actually. The rest, actually, when I go out of the room was business. When I get back to the, to the room, actually, I would socialize and stay there. Actually, people used to call me introvert because outside I never used to talk a lot. But inside the room, actually, I would talk and jump and jump everywhere, okay? So, uh, to avoid this issue of the mental issue, for example, of am I going to get a job? Or how do I bring up my GPA? This needs to start from the word go. Actually, by the time actually you are the fourth year, actually, you'll just need to be tweaking some few things here and there and yeah. you'll be good to go. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. let me, an, an, another question, no, yeah? The yeah. same thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've worked for, uh, for, uh, from like the word go. Yes. 
So after you're done, your mm. GPA is good, but you don't have a job. Yeah, yeah. So can that um, be a cause of uh, mental illness, depression, anxiety, mm. all, it can. all oh, of that? Okay, okay. Well, um, at some point, there is a reason, and at some point, I would say there is no reason, okay? Because uh, to my own perspective, or how I look at things is, you don't go to school just to get an education. That's not all what you need to do in this school. What you can do is go to school, get that education, which is going to convert to knowledge, are you together? Mm -hmm. And then use that knowledge outside there. Are we together? Yeah. Uh, we have an element of what you call entrepreneurship. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, an entrepreneur actually does not need much, doesn't need much apart from capital and some little knowledge to start something. Okay? So, uh, if for example, like uh, you had that spirit of entrepreneurship, okay? Then you would have any cost to do what? Of alarm to be stressed because you just use a little of your knowledge and then you transfer it to entrepreneurial skills and then you get something done are you together mm -hmm. and in return you're going to get some uh, in return on investment or you're going to make some money mm -hmm. at the same point uh, if this person actually was just uh, school work 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 for example now this is a person actually uh who's gonna find himself in a lot of trouble or a lot of let me say uh in some deep uh, uh thinking points of view okay reason being is if that was the way and then you get that way actually you will be frustrated so what you need to do is as a student for example as we are growing up the ladder in our academics and going to the uh, let me say to the world business or, or, or knowledge, actually, you need to be open-minded. Yeah, you need to be open-minded. You need to prepare yourself in terms of if A does not work, have a plan B. B. Are you together? Okay. And if plan B doesn't work, plan it's hard to say have a plan <laughs> C, but if it's possible, yeah. get a plan C. Yeah. Then by so doing, actually, you won't have a lot of trouble or a lot of mental challenges. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, to you, Brian. Yeah. Do you think um, unemployment is in any way associated to the high crime rate in the country? Yeah, uh -huh. it is actually. It is. It is. It is. So let's let's take for example, like someone has gone four years. Actually, it's more than four years, right? Because you're doing the eight for four system, yeah. right? So that's eight years in primary, four years in high school, and then four years in the university. And then you get out of there, and then you find like. Well, what my, my ambitions previously hasn't come yet. So the, the person might look for other alternatives on how they can actually survive to the world. So this, this actually contributes to some point high crime rate that we have in our country. Because like if you find now a student who is a graduate now, maybe in the university, gets out there, doesn't get a job, isn't able to like f uh, financially sustain themselves because like outside Outside, it's, a, it's another different world, you know? Once you're done with the university, like your parents, they have this mentality that my son is now grown up, okay? So you can actually handle yourself. But if you require any help, they can, you can actually come back to them and they'll, they'll help you. But like for us men, we have this, uh, I can say like mentality or something. Mm -hmm. Like, we we are, we are boys, so we are like supposed to provide. So if you have a family, you provide for him, right? So you you start from scratch, mm -hmm. and the main reason why I'm saying like uh, we have a high crime rate in our country is because now if I have that perspective, like I need to do something, so I'll start like I can actually get into drugs, into the business of drugs. I can actually start having mob moving, like forming groups joining gangs and stuff and then you get cheap money mm -hmm. and you, in the end you think like wow so even the like the eight four years which i've been in school wasn't really that necessary because you're now finding cheap money and cheap source of living right easy money yeah easy money but it's not good mm -hmm. at the end so uh, the best advice i can actually give to the youth outside there is don't give up in anything right so like like for me i've come from a far, far like my history behind from where I am, I'm really so thankful to God because I actually, I was also not performing well, that well, when I was in primary, but it started like, I started to challenge myself. I said like, if other people they reach there, why can't I 
come to that place. Yeah. yeah. So the only best thing is that you just seek advice from people who have like experience like Mr. Ian and also put God first in everything. Yeah. But you know, not every student um, yeah. is uh, privileged to have a lecturer like yeah. Mr. Ian. So it's, it's how true. would you like, yeah. what would you, what advice would you give them? To the people like who yeah. don't have the people privilege. People who are thinking, yeah. see like let me just drop out since yeah. I'm going to get money. See the other, yeah. like if Nikika, if I stay in school for yeah. like four years, yeah. I won't get a job. Yeah. Why don't I just drop out right now and get the easy money? Yeah. Yeah. But if you have the chance, use it. Utilize it so because that's your advice. yeah, that's like my advice. Yeah, so if you have the chance, like for me, I got the chance, and I've been using it since from back then. Mm -hmm. But if you don't get the chance, just there's always an opportunity ahead of you. It's how you find it in the end, right? So if maybe you're not able like to proceed on to the university yeah. level. <laughs> Yes, We're on a break. Eh? Don't talk about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? Mr. <laughs> Yes. Uh -huh. Don't talk about Hi. Hi. Hi, Markham. How's your beer? Four minutes. Hi, what about the ED money? Hi. Hi. So um, what would yeah. be your, we are coming to the end of the show, I wanted you guys to like give us a last minute advice to the students watching and the lecturers watching and the parents watching, everybody yeah. watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one advice. Uh, please. please. Stay in. We have. <laughs> Make it quick, Brian, time. Oh, it's Make me. It quick. Time, oh, oh, time. okay, Four okay, minutes. okay. So the best advice that. I can actually do is, parents, we're really thankful for every single opportunity. You've been with us from the beginning, and you've stick with us till the end. Yeah. So I'll just say, don't give up in anything. Just do your best. Try as much as possible, and also put God first in every single thing. I started from far, and right now I'm here with privileges like to be hosted in in. In so many things, like I don't know, I am so blessed, but I don't count them as, as something that is not more gifted, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all have gifts, yeah. and it's how you utilize them. So just don't give up, do all your best, and stay focused. Okay, yeah. to you, Mr. Ian, a short message. Thank you very much. Because we're running out of time. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, what I'd like to tell, let me say, like uh, the students and those who are job hunting, use your knowledge to tap your gifts. We all have gifts, but you don't use our gifts. So once you have your knowledge, then you have room to tap, to tap your gift. You have so many people who can do different things, not necessarily under employment, because if uh, you have a gift of, let me say, presenting something clearly to people, that's a good gift. If you have an employment or a work, sorry, um, an opportunity, let me say, like an opportunity of, of working under a certain person, it's very good. But if you have knowledge, then the whole universe is yours to be an entrepreneur, get you a good jobs, and make a better living. Thank you. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you. And with that, we've come to the end of the show. Please share your thoughts with us on Twitter at RTN Somali TV and on all our social media platforms, RTN TV. Thank you.